My toothbrush is covered in urine. Now, yes friends, I am back to van life. I'm sure a lot of you guys are kind of shocked considering in a previous video I said I would never do this again, but here I am. It turns out that van life is not very fun when you have to shower from a bag, don't have a toilet, air conditioning, or a fridge. But the good thing is that I have all of those things now. The bad thing is that I don't have a working transmission. Uh, yeah, let's just rewind back a few days. After driving 1,700 miles from Maryland all the way to Colorado, I was driving on one of the most dangerous highways in the US called the Million Dollar Highway. I mean, look at that cliff. No guardrails in sight. While I was going up one of the mountains, just a mile away from my campsite, my truck started smoking, leaking fluid, and stopped moving forward altogether. I backed my truck up and saw that this is right here, and it goes all the way down the highway, I can see it all the way past that sign there, so I must have been leaking the entire way up the mountain. And that leaves me here with no transmission fluid, no phone service. Um, as you can see, it's getting late in the day. I've decided I'm just gonna camp here, make the best of it, and then in the morning I'm gonna hitchhike my way back into town. Hopefully there will be someone kind enough to pick me up. Uh, I don't think I look too scary. I am parked on kind of a slant, uh, I have my emergency brakes on, but just in case, I did put boulders under my tires. I'm just hoping that'll keep my truck from rolling into the ditch over there. Good morning guys. Last night got absolutely freezing. I don't even have a trash. Okay. Into the sink. I'm kind of excited to go hitchhiking today. It'll be my first time. Um, the only thing on my mind is that there's two types of people that pick up hitchhikers. One would be a good Samaritan and two a serial killer. If you guys are watching this, that means I did not, in fact, die. I've completely packed a bag with a few outfits just in case I do need to stay in town for a while. That's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen because my truck is not moving at all. So I'm standing here waiting for traffic to come down towards your way, but all the traffic seems to be going away. Seriously, there's even more cars coming from your way. This might not be as easy as I thought it would be. Hello. I'll have to do some stuff around for you, and then um, I could probably take you as far as Montrose. Thank you so much. Yeah, that sucks. Where are you guys headed? <laughs> we were just trying to head up just a mile up, more up the road to a campsite. To camp? Yeah. Well, I hope you guys get it figured out. Thank you. I hope so too. Now, from a Coloradan, how do you sit, pronounce this town? Ure or Ure? Ure. Say it like you're gonna stick it in your A. Thank you. That's what I've been calling it, but I heard other people say oh, different things. Oh, you hear things. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, at the mechanic. When I see a thing for towing, so that's a good sign. I'm just waiting for somebody. We had our truck break down on the mountain up there, mm -hmm. and we were wondering if you guys would be able to tow it down. I would take a bunch of fluid with me and go up and fill it and, okay. and try it. Okay. Okay. Because the tow is going to be expensive. He told me that he can't work on a diesel vehicle and also they don't tow something that big, so I'm kind of screwed on that end. But he also said, based on how I was explaining everything, it sounds like the transmission fluid just got too hot and was spit up out of my engine. So his suggestion was to just buy some transmission fluid, drive it back up there. I might hitchhike my way back up. I don't really have another way to get there. And then I can find a mechanic that deals with diesel cars and then take it from there, basically. Apparently, this is an issue with my make and model. So that's great. All right, I found a Jeep place that allows rentals for a day. I've decided I don't want to hitchhike my way back up but it is a mile away, so I have some walking to do. Good thing is that this is not the worst place to break down. It's beautiful. It took about 15 minutes, but it's worth it to save money on towing. Couple things, the tire yeah. light's on. We run the tires low, because most people do off-roading. You guys aren't, obviously. Yeah. And then the check engine light's on, but don't worry, it's an emissions code. Okay. Okay. okay? 
so we're about halfway up the mountain and we can already start to see the trail of transmission fluid going up the mountain um, and also you can see how sheer the drop off is on the side uh, so obviously we were leaking for a very very long time going all the way up the mountain not even I had no clue that that was happening and here goes our line all the way up to our truck but we've made it so let's go fill up this transmission fluid hopefully that's the issue it's not leaking out of the bottom I put a little bit in so far so that's a good sign last bottle done let's check and see if it's leaking I do not see a leak Uh, it's been a while since I talked to you guys and I have quite the update. I'm at an auto repair place. Long story short, I got here by the grace of God, literally the grace of God. They told me that if I drive anymore that my transmission will lock up and I won't be able to drive anywhere and I'll have to be towed. Um, I need to get it replaced. It's $4,500. $4,500. So that is incredibly... Horrifying, I guess is the right word for that. And also on top of that, it is going to take two weeks for the transmission to get here to where I am. Um, so guess who gets to camp in this parking lot for the next two weeks? Me, yay. Luckily I am in walking distance of a lot of different stores. There's a Walmart down the road about a half mile. The people here are really nice. They're letting me hook up my water to right there and then also letting me use electric. This is the joy of living in a vehicle, but at least they're letting me stay in my camper in this parking lot that saves me from having to pay for really expensive hotels. I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to fight this little guy for access to the water. Not looking forward to that. It's always scary because it explodes in your face. I'm gonna run. Let's get back. Good to go. This is my bathroom. Welcome. It's just big enough to fit in and move around. The curtain's right here. My toilet's also in here. I have two bags for dirty and clean laundry so it doesn't get wet while I shower. I keep all of my shower supplies in that bin, sink, and then more shower supplies up there. The only downside is that my shower drains into the black tank, which just means that it's gonna fill up way quicker than it normally would. Really quick, I'd like to pop in here and introduce you guys to a solution that if I had stayed at a hotel instead of this parking lot, would have made the experience cheaper. Surfshark! A virtual private network that allows you to trick your device into thinking you were anywhere in the world. And I mean anywhere because they have over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries. I know that you're thinking, how exactly does this help me save money? Like I said, Surfshark allows you to trick your device into thinking you were anywhere in the world, which comes in handy when you are booking tickets online. The thing is, is that whenever you're booking things online, the website has a very sneaky tactic. They can track your location and change the prices of the tickets accordingly, whether whether it's for a hotel, train tickets, plane tickets, you name it. For example, let's say that I'm trying to book a hotel while I'm in the UK. I look online, the prices are quite high. All that I have to do is log into Surfshark, select a different country like the US for example, and I can watch the prices fall. This works simply because of supply and demand. The less people looking for a ticket from a certain country, the lower the prices are gonna be to entice you. So that is great and all, but that is not where the perks stop. Surfshark also protects your online identity while you use public Wi-Fi. Because if you didn't know, every time you're hooking up to that Starbucks, McDonald's, airport Wi-Fi, anyone else connected to that Wi-Fi has access to your personal information. And I mean banking information, social media passwords, just a lot of personal things you don't want people having access to. So all you have to do is turn on Surfshark and it'll put a wall up between you and the other person on that Wi-Fi and they no longer have access to your information. I use Surfshark all of the time when I travel and it helps me have a better peace of mind knowing that my 
like credit card information and stuff is not gonna be stolen. But lucky for you guys, Surfshark is offering my audience a special deal. To get this exclusive deal, click on the link in my description and use code EthanTravels at checkout for an extra three months free. Oh, also they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like the service, you can always get your money back. But I'm telling you, you'll like it. Anyway, thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and for providing everyone with online security. I clean the kitchen every single night because one, bugs, and two, because if it gets even a little bit dirty, it gets overwhelming. So I just like to wipe everything down. Welcome to my crib. So last time I lived in a van, I did have a TV, but that thing did not work. Um, mainly because my solar didn't work. But now I have a really good solar setup. And <laughs> let me tell you, I play my PS5 up here. I watch Netflix. Game changer, I tell you. Come on, this is supposed to be a good example. It's not doing very well. Not black. Uh, there was one night I got home and he was asleep on the couch and the TV was on. And I don't know what he fell asleep to, but when I came in. Okay, good night, guys. <laughs> I slept amazing, how'd you sleep? Okay, this is gonna explode. So I woke up to even worse news this morning. After my glorious shower last night, I think I took too long of one and I also accidentally left the tap on a trickle. And all of the water goes into my black tank, and if you know what that means, my black tank is completely full and overflowing into my shower this morning. Overflowing! So my floor is covered in urine. Thankfully, not the other stuff, but urine and shower water. I started soaking it up with paper towels. Uh, I need to figure out how to dump this. The man that's fixing my truck said that I can't leave this parking lot unless it's an emergency, and I'm guessing that this constitutes as an emergency having urine all over my floor. So I looked it up and there is a dump station about a mile down the road at a gas station. Thank you, God. On the drive over, I forgot to put my basket of belongings away and they fell on the floor into the sewage water. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <sighs> that is just not going my way right now, by any means, not even gonna lie. My toothbrush is covered in urine. <sighs> Gosh. Okay. So now that I got that done, I washed my face in the sink, took advantage of the water that I had, and put on some new clothes. But with that said, I just realized that I'm out of shirts. I have two solutions. I can either go to the laundromat, or I found a river nearby on Google Maps. At least that's what it looks like. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to wash my clothes in there as long as the river isn't absolutely disgusting. Um, and it's also at a park, so that makes me think it'll be clean as well. Because I can't go to the laundromat and the park. I have to pick. Because I'm supposed to not be driving, okay? So I think I'm going to pick the park and just wash my clothes in the river. It works, right? People have been doing it for thousands of years. And don't worry, I won't use soap. All good. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go out on that rock right there. I'm glad I was able to get that done. It's cheaper than a laundromat and I can only pick one place to go because I can only drive so far. So, I think this works better than a laundromat for the day, right? But now that I'm bored, I'm gonna go explore the park and see what else there is to offer. There are people surfing in the river.
This park is really peaceful. It's a nice break from that parking lot. There's a lot of people here, a lot of other van lifers specifically, and a lot of people surfing in the river, which I wish I could do. It looks so much fun, but I know that I would bust my butt and maybe drown, honestly, like hit a rock or something. <sighs> smells like flowers, yet I don't see any anywhere. That's as far as I'm going. <laughs> While I'm here, I'm gonna attempt to make a rope swing. Wish me luck. Now I just need to go find a big stick, but this whole park is completely clear of sticks, so might be more difficult than I wish. After scouring this park from bottom to top, I found these three sticks. They're kind of concerningly sharp, <laughs> so I need to aim them downward so that they don't poke anything. But my thought process is if I keep all three of these together, it will hold. Okay, that should be good. Then you just slip this under. That looks kind of sturdy. This kind of looks like the tree from The Conjuring. It works! I would definitely say this was a success. Somebody's been going ham on that tree. It's getting going. I just heard the sticks under my butt crack, so. <laughs> under my butt crack. <laughs> Best thing about this is that it is really easy to undo. I can save the rope. Oh look, we got a souvenir. Like that, we're done. Hi guys, so I'm on my roof as you can see. <sighs> my two weeks are up now. This is my last day here. By the time I upload this, I will be gone. I didn't end up recording most of the things that I did because it was kind of boring. But a few things did happen, like I tried getting a rental car about a few days into this whole excursion. I walked three miles one way to find out that I couldn't get it then had to walk three miles back in the rain, so that was a joy. Just things like that happened. Nothing super crazy, but inconvenient for sure. I'm just glad that my truck is fixed and I'm ready to go back on the road. I'm super excited. I think I'm gonna go to Utah because it is getting quite cold here. But all in all, I enjoyed my time in this town, even though it wasn't on the like in the best circumstances I guess but also I didn't really want to take up the intro talking about this I just kind of wanted to get straight into the video yes I am back in van life not a surprise to you guys since you watched this entire video um, but I know I'm gonna have a lot of questions about it so I'm just gonna get some off of the list um, at least the ones that I think I'm gonna expect I don't know how long I'll be doing this for I think at least a year if my truck stays in shape I can't really think of anything else that can go wrong. But at least a year, I would really love to. I kind of want to go up to Alaska next summer. I think that would be super cool. And I'm going to continue making van life content. But I want to focus more on showing you guys beautiful places rather than doing activities, which is what I did in the past. We'll just go with the flow. See how this goes. I hope you guys are also excited because there are so many beautiful places in the US that I want to explore. But yeah, those are all of my updates. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. Maybe I'll make a video dedicated to that in the future. Maybe you don't have any, that's fine too. Before I go, I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. Thank you guys so very much. Someone just looked up here while I'm talking in the camera. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel. I greatly appreciate it. Because of you, I'm able to continue making content and show you all of the beautiful places that the world and the United States have to offer. And an extra special thank you goes to R. Michael Blackburn, Scott Krutz, Brian Butterfield, Eric Fast, Michael Posh, Scott Sweaters, Paul Carpenter, and Britt Saunders. 
Once again, thank you guys so very much. I greatly appreciate it. If you would like to support the channel in any other way, I'll have links in the description. And once again on this video, I want to give a big shout out to the Cancer Research Institute. They're doing great work over there trying to battle cancer. They teach your immune system to kill cancer at its source, so it's great. Um, it's a great cause to support if you would like to. I'll also have their donation information linked in the description. Also, make sure to give this video a like, dislike, comment. All of those are free ways that you can help my channel out immensely. So please, please, please hit that <laughs> like button. But anyway, I think that that is all that I have to say. Peace out. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.